if you are a young person, and even if you are 25 or older, and you are spending a lot of time looking at things up close, and you are not allowing your vision to relax, you may or may not have migraine headaches. You may or may not have headaches. Many people are experiencing severe vision problems because they're not getting enough sunlight during the day. They have sleep problems because they're not viewing sunlight early in the day. Challenges with your eyesight getting worse as you age, or even in young people, there's a, you know, at least according to the articles, they describe it as this epidemic of myopia can largely be dealt with by getting outside, going into panoramic vision. If your behaviors around vision aren't right, you cannot expect to have good, healthy eyesight for a long time, meaning throughout your lifespan. And if your vision is already poor, many of these things that I'm talking about today, perhaps all of them will improve your vision to some degree. And if your vision is starting to go, then doing these behaviors is likely to really enhance the quality of the vision that you will build and maintain over time. It's actually not going to solve the problem just to look up from your computer screen. You need to go to a window. You need to look out at a distance. Ideally, you would even open the window because those windows actually filter out a lot of the blue light that you want during the daytime, a lot of the sunlight. It's actually 50 times less gets through. You want to get out onto a balcony. You want to relax your eyes and look out at the horizon. You want to go into what's called panoramic vision and let your vision expand. You want this lens mechanism to be very elastic. You don't want it to get stuck in that configuration of looking at things up close. Accommodation is a wonderful feature of your visual system, but you don't want to push that too hard too often or for too long. You want to view the horizon. You want to get outside, not just to lighten the load on your mind or to think about other things, but to maintain the health of your visual system. In other words, you want to exercise these muscles, and that involves both the lens moving and getting kind of thicker and relaxing that lens. And the relaxation of the lens is actually one of the best things you can do for the musculature of the inner eye. You might be surprised, but for every 30 minutes of focused work, you probably want to look up every once in a while and just try and relax your face and eye muscles, including your jaw muscles, because all these things are closely linked in the brainstem and allow your eyes to go into a so-called panoramic vision where you're just not really focusing on anything and then refocus on your work. At least every 90 minutes of looking at things up close or even if you're looking at a screen, you know, a television screen, or, or you're watching a movie, or you're indoors, for every 90 minutes of that, you ideally would have at least 20, probably more like 30 minutes of being outside, ideally, but if you can't be outside, of non-up-close vision. Now you might say, that's impossible. How am I supposed to do that? I, you know, I'm in an office or I'm in a building. Get to a window, get outside if you can do it safely, Get onto a balcony and just let your eyes relax. You can actually take a few minutes each day, or maybe if you don't do it each day, you could do every third day or so, and actually just visually track a ball. Sometimes it's moving in in kind of an infinity symbol. Sometimes it's more of a sawtooth. Sometimes it's changing speed. Sometimes the, uh, the cue that you're following, the little target is um, dilating and contracting. This is going to keep the muscles, I want to be clear, this is going to keep the extraocular muscles conditioned and strong and allow you to have a healthy, smooth pursuit system. Remember, the brain follows the eye. It follows the movements of the eye. It has to deal with that. And the neural circuits within the brain have to cope with changes in smooth pursuit. So if you're doing a lot of reading up close, you're not viewing horizons, you're not getting a lot of smooth pursuit type stimulation from your life, or you're just getting it within the confines of a little box on your phone, like your your smooth pursuit is over, you know, millimeters or what we, we, we always talk in terms of visual angle, but the amount of degrees of visual angle. But if you're just looking at smooth pursuit in this little tiny box on your phone or on your computer screen, and you're not looking at objects in your environment, like swooping birds and things like that, which I'm guessing many of you are not spending your time doing, well, these mechanisms for smooth pursuit will get worse over time. Your vision will get worse. And so while I prefer that people get out into the real world and experience smooth pursuit tracking of visual objects. You know, maybe it's a good reason to go to a hockey game or to, you know, and walk, try and keep your eye on the puck, which I can never seem to do. Move so fast. 
or I guess this is a good reason to watch live sports if that's your thing or watch a tennis match like a cat, like a kitten, watching the ball go back and forth. Whatever, watching kids play, it doesn't really matter. The, the idea is that you want to use the visual system regularly for what it was designed for and smooth pursuit is a great way to keep the visual and motion tracking systems of the brain and the eye and the extraocular muscles working in a really nice coordinate fashion. I would say five to 10 minutes, three times a week will be great. If you care about your vision, you can train your vision in this way. The other one is to train accommodation. There are a lot of videos out there. I want to be clear on the internet, some of which um, are from clinicians, some of which are not, some of which are from scientists, some of which are from other sources, talking about things you can do to make your vision better, to improve your vision. Most of those are geared toward improving the extraocular eye muscles. So spending a few minutes, you might even just do this for two minutes of looking at something up close, that's gonna activate these accommodation mechanisms and then moving it at arm's length and focusing on it for five, 10 seconds, maybe more, maybe uh, 15 or 20 seconds, then slowly moving it into a location and then out. This is actually a lot like the visual training that's done post concussion to try and repair actually repair some of the balance and motor and visual and cognitive aspects of the brain. Spend two to three minutes doing Smooth Pursuit. There's some programs on YouTube. Um, you can just look up Smooth Pursuit Stimulus. You could do this with a pen if you wanted. <laughs> you could do this. Uh, someone else could hold a wand and you could do that uh, if you've got someone that can do that for you. Practice accommodation for a few minutes, maybe every other day. Just bring something in close. You'll feel the strain of your eyes doing that. I can feel it right now. Move it out you'll feel a relaxation point, move it past that relaxation point where you will have to do what's called a virgin side movement to maintain focus on that location as it moves out, bring it back in. It's worth doing. It's really worth preserving your vision. And again, if you're a young person, this is great because then you can actually build an extra strong visual system using all the tools that we're describing.